Why hello there my lovelies. My name is John and this is a video that I did not think that I would be making. This is a video solely on logging with an Optimizely CMS number 12. Now historically logging probably won't warrant a whole video. In previous versions of CMS you installed the software, it came with a package called log for nets. You could easily and simply just write log messages doing like log.error and life was groovy. However, in CMS 12, we're using ASP.NET 5 and a website can now be hosted in a Mac, a Linux, or maybe a Windows. And this basically means stuff like file logging is not available out the box anymore. So it'll be up to you to decide what strategy you want to use, what packages that you want to use. So we're gonna be covering all of that now, another tweak we'll be making in this video is writing our log files to JSON because this is going to allow you to more easily query your logs. We're also going to look at free programs which will help you analyze your logs much quicker. So all of this stuff is going to be super useful. There's going to be a lot more content in here than you probably expected. Now, if you haven't come across my videos before, I recommend that you absolutely smash that subscribe button. I do weekly YouTube videos on Optimizely development basically if you want to be the best developer you can be this is the channel for you so hit subscribe like all that jazz so assuming you've done that let's start by looking at the basics and how we can actually write some log messages to a log all the codes you're about to see me write in this video and go over is available from my starter kit so instead of tippy tapping from screen all you need to do is head over to my githubs which is john d jones there's a link below and then simply be a legend, follow me, and then pinned at the bottom, there's this Optimizely CMS V12 starter kit. Follow it if you want to see the updates, but yeah, everything is in there. Now, let's have a look at this logging in action. So I've created myself a, a logger controller. So in my class library, I've got this vanilla folder for vanilla MVC, and I've got a logger controller. Now, logger controller is a vanilla MVC controller. And one useful thing for you to know is that if you're trying to get vanilla MVC controllers to work, you will need to create a route in the routing table. Otherwise, we'll just get a 404 error when we try to view it and things will be terrible. So in order to create this rule, what you wanna do is go over to startup, in startup and within configure, you'll add in some middleware to add in a rule. So within the use endpoint section, there's an option for map controller route. So just put in defaults and use a pattern of controller slash action slash ID and the controller you're about to see will magically work. Now, when it comes to logging within EpiServer Optimizer CMS, we have two options nowadays. So the one that I generally use because it uses interfaces is using this iLogger. So what we do is pass in this iLogger, which is a Microsoft.extensions.logging framework thing. You pass in a T, so it uses generics, and the T should be the name of the class you want to log against, just so when things get logged out, it'll get some extra metadata. And then once you have this instance, you can do all the normal logging things you'd expect, like trace, warnings, criticals, informations, debugging. Now, within the Optimizer CMS 12, you also get access to the log manager. Now the log manager is an epi server specific thing, which is found in episerver.logging. Now this is a um, responsible for doing pretty much exactly the same thing. The only difference is, you know, it's using a static class. It's not using interfaces, which is not ideal for me. But yeah, you do the same thing of get logger, pass in the type of logger you want to create, and then you get access to methods like error, warning, trace, all that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at this in action. So if we go to my websites, you can see that I can access using controller and action. So logger.index. Now firing that off is going to set some loggers. And as you can see in my beautiful terminal here, you can see that I'm getting the log manager error. I'm getting the message from the warning message, the fail, the critical. So all of those things are getting wrapped in here. So it doesn't really make a difference which one you use, you can still get access to the logs. Now, as you'll notice, which is a bit annoying, is that out of the box, 
we're logging all our errors to the console. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, in production, this isn't going to cut the mustard. To be fair, actually, even in development, it's not really going to cut the mustard. What happens if I accidentally close this, lose all my errors? ASP.NET 5 never has and supposedly never will support file based logging. And it also never will provide support for new relic logging. And this is the reason why you'll need to install a third party logging provider. The framework has been designed to be extensible. And lucky for us, loads of people have already gone out and written some file based loggers and pretty much any other type of logger that you need. So all we need to do is install some NuGet packages and do a little bit of configuration. Now, if you want to see a list of all the different providers, there's a list in the Microsoft website. So .NET Core Extensions Logging Provider. Scroll down to the bottom of a very hefty page and you'll see a few examples. So you can see that we have Log4Net, Nlog and Serilog. Now, historically, with the EpiServer CMS, came out of the box with Log4Net. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Serilog. Now, I've been using Serilog for a couple of years, mainly because another CMS uses it and I've got used to it. Now, the great thing about serial log, which I don't think you can do in log4net, is that you can write to JSON format. And having your logs in JSON is really handy because it's gonna allow you to do searching, it's allow you to do filtering, and it's allow you to do queries on it. So no matter what provider you pick, I recommend nowadays that if you're doing file-based stuff, you want to pick JSON. So we're going to do Siri log. The first thing we need to do is install it within our web project. So as you can see right in front of us, we've got Siri log, Siri log ASP.NET Core, and Siri log framework logging. Now all of this is going to allow us to do basic Siri log capabilities. I've also installed this Siri log formatting compact, and as you can see here, it's a simple compact JSON-based event formatter for Siri log. And we're also going to do this Serialog syncs file. And this is going to allow Serialog to be able to write to disk. So as you can see, there's a lot of packages to install. However, which one you really want would depend on your logging strategy. But as you can see, it's very extendable. Now, in order to get up and running with Serialog, you're going to head over to your program.cs. Now, within main, the easiest way of doing things, but not necessarily the best, is on screen right now. So what we can do is a logger.logger .logger, and that equals a new logger configuration. And then from here, we can start adding in the minimum log level. We can say which file we want to write to using the dot write. And then we can also write things to JSON if we want to. So this is kind of the bog standard way of writing log files. Now we need to include this dot use serial log middleware extension call here. This goes within your create host builder and it needs to be underneath your configure CMS defaults. Now, when we've got this up and running, if I go back to my web sets, type in a logger dot index. What should hopefully happen is that if I go back to my files, which should be over here within my CMS, as you can see, I have configured it above. If you look in app data, you can see I've now got this log text file. And from here, you can see that I've got in all those errors that we've looked at within the logger controller. So this is one way of doing it, and it's a simple way. Now, the limitation of this approach is that we've hard coded all the configuration within code. And if we've got different environments within our system, this means that we're going to have loads of different if statements, or it basically means we're going to have to do a release to change things. So a better way of managing your Siri log configuration is through app settings. So let's delete this bad boy and uncomment the line below it. So another way of doing this is doing the logger.logger, .logger, new logger configuration, except for this time we're going to use the read from dot configuration going to pass in this configuration property and we're going to do right to console and then create logger. Now this configuration item is created above me and what this is is a public property of type i configuration and from here we're just going to return a configuration builder. Now I've covered what all this crazy code is in a different video 
Basically, if you want to apply different environment settings and different machine names on top of your app settings, so you can say do things like the local developer configurations, and um, this is what this is all about. Again, I've covered this in a different tutorial. At a bare minimum, you'll probably want to do something like this. Now, the great thing of having this as a property is that we can set it for the log configuration, and then we can also use it to configure the application. So this same property is being used in in two locations. So double the fun, also half the drive. So yeah, you just need to do in configure app configuration, builder dot add configuration, add in that configuration object, and we are off to the races. Okay, so it's time now to configure our CV log. So if we head back over to app settings.json, for the eagle-eyed from you, you might have noticed there was a serial log setting earlier. So as you can see, we've still got things like minimum level here. There's loads of different configurations, but the important thing is this uh, right to bit. Now I've got two diff well, three different types of loggers here. So we've got a logger, which is writing out to the console. I've defined a file logger, and this file logger is going to write logs to log dot log dot text it's going to have a rolling interval of per day and then our output template is going to be timestamp blah 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 so this is going to be the format it reads out of now as i was saying my recommended approach is to use json however if you want to create a text-based logger you can add in this different config now the great thing is is you can add in as many different write to elements as you want so if i delete that one what we can see right here is that let's make sure that's okay perfect as you can see i'm also doing a file write however this time the formatter is using the siri log formatting json json formatter which is in the siri log assembly so this little jobby right here is going to write everything out into json so now if we go back to our oed page type in the logger dot and go back to our log file web root. This time remember, it's been configured to write logs in the log directory. And then from here, we've got a text file and a JSON file. So in the text file, this is, you know, pretty standard. You've got a log, it's got some dates, times, error message. However, we've also got our JSON. And as you can see with JSON, We've got everything within a object. So we've got the timestamps, the level, the message. Now, granted, you might be looking at this and going, I'm opening a notepad. Who gives a hoot which way we do it? But the great thing about JSON is there's actually additional third party tools that you can use that make looking at logs that much easier. Now, there's loads of things on the market you can use. The one that I'm going to showcase today is called Tailblazer, mainly because it's free. So yeah, go over to Roland Fezant, Taylor Blazer. If you go to the releases page, you can basically download some assets right here, and then you can get Taylor Blazer up and running. Now this is Taylor Blazer on the screen in front of us. And as you can see, I've got my JSON log file open for today, and I can search from it. So I can do things like error. This is gonna create a filter, and it's gonna reduce things down. Now I could also do say like an initial filter on login time maybe. And then we've also got the same errors. But as you can see at the top, I can have all these different queries ready and ready to rock. Now there are additional third party commercial tools which will actually format this in a much better and nicer way for you. However, as you can see, being able to search for stuff and errors within this logger here is much easier compared to doing it within Visual Studios. I mean, the great thing is here is that when I'm developing, I can just have my Visual Studio open up. I can have Tailblazer in my secondary monitor and I can just always have access to my logs. So as you can see, the new way of doing things in ASP.NET 5, it's not as easy as it used to be. However, it's way more easier and configurable to do additional things. So overall, I think it's a bit of a win. So who would have thought a 15 minutes video just on how to set up logging? Can you Adam and Eve it? Log. To get it log instead of lol. Log. <laughs> Sorry. As I'm hoping you can see, setting up logging in ASP.NET 5 
CMS 12, not that hard as long as you know what you're doing. I will hold my hands up that when I started doing this first time, I did spend a while trying to figure out why it wasn't logging to disk anymore until I had to read a bit of articles, do a bit of Google research. So I'm hoping I've saved you a lot of grief. Just follow my instructions and your life will be absolutely amazing. I am hoping this video has been of interest for you. If you want to see me do more videos on Optimize the CMS, please hit that like button. Like basically tells me that I should be doing more content of this type. If you didn't like it, hit like as well, just to force someone that you don't like to watch this video. Ha. Again, this is the YouTube. So if you want to do me a solid and you want to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button so you can see next week edition. It'll be amazing. Also, I do a Sunday newsletter. It's just got some links to my content and stuff I found interesting on Reddit this week. So subscribe, you can subscribe, it's very easy. I'm hoping that you have found amazing value from this video. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are in the world today. And lastly, happy coding.